Let's welcome in our first guest of the day from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, Pastor Tim Garino. Good to see you, TG. Good. Thank, thanks so much for having me out. I appreciate this. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any childhood stories to compete with uh, what we've got going on in the room so far? Because <laughs> I didn't even get into Matthew Dean Miller. Yeah. No, no. I, no he's, he's got a lot of good stuff going on there. Now, but as a kid, you should have been around. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Well, and, and when my wife and I got married in 1985, you're talking about the clothes and everything. Uh, she went through all my clothes, got rid of them all. She said that they were from 1979. The disco era was over, so she cleaned my. She cleaned it out. And she said, "I will buy you clothes from now on." So, yeah, that's that's for me. My wife, same thing. She. We were talking about this before we went on the air, and Matt said in his adult life he's never bought a piece of hey, clothing. Hey, you don't have to share that with everyone. That was in this room. That takes a lot of that takes a lot of pressure Pastor, off. Them, Pastor Tim you know? shared a similar you... story, and I said. Other than a gift, my wife has never bought any of my clothing. I'm, all my clothing is self-purchased. And any, anybody who has seen me would go, well, that explains a lot. Got so, Connie <laughs> Chung over here, They're just between us. You know? no one else well, those days are gone, mister. Those, those days are gone. What about you, Bond? Well, I presume you buy your own clothing. I, uh, I do buy my yeah. own clothing. So we're evenly divided in the room here. Yes. Four men, Bondwell and I buy our own stuff. You two don't know where a clothing location is. So now everyone on Facebook, vote as to who looks the best dressed right. and find out whether our wives are doing a better job than you guys are. I think, it's, I, I think the best dressed is definitely Rob because he has on the TV 10 shirt, mm -hmm. you know, representing all of us. Well, Mario is modeling the television 10 yeah. wear right now. Yes. Today. Quite the haberdasher, Mr. Hornby. <laughs> Tim, how is your fundraiser going? Going good. Uh, things are going really good at 604 for the 604 project. We are, um, man, there's, the extension is being is built. Um, it, they're, they did, they connected the roofs. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on. We have the March 7th, we have a walkthrough, seeing the progress of that. That is really, it's, it's evolving. Um, there's a lot more work still needs to be done. We're still about uh, 500,000 short of our goal. But, um, you know, if you see it now, uh, we the masons are there. They're um, doing the the wall, the walls in the back for the um, extension that comes out. If you go inside, you see all the rooms. We got plumbing uh, in there now. We got the uh, showers and the and the tubs are in there. There's so much going on right now. There, uh, we're excited. A lot has been taking place, and um, we're just. Uh, Hoping it gets done here real soon. I can't wait for it to get done. I did enjoy what you the the hand motion you just made, uh, yeah. Tim. But you should wait till the, the goal is done. Yeah. You know, until you start doing you know the, 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 the touchdown side. You know? uh, you just, yeah, I, I'm just I, I I tell you it's 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 been a process. It's been a very uh, learning process. It's a learning curve. It's excited. Had some uh, hiccups here and there because uh, the building is old. We had to redo some flooring and redo some ceilings. And and redo some all kinds of stuff, walls and bearings, and uh, you, you name it. I think we've redone it. <laughs> uh, it looks good. It looks great yeah. from the outside. Yeah, and and I don't know if you got to see the back where they extended it out. Yeah. Um, that's that that is just really amazing how they were able to do all that. What was what was the original goal? Uh, original goal was eight hundred thousand dollars. Wow! And You've already raised a ton of money. Yeah, we That's great. almost one point two now. We're on, we're at one point two. Um, we it will cost about with costs going up and everything. I think it's almost a million dollars just to remodel it, the building wise, the cost wise. Yeah, and then it's going to cost another um, about another two hundred and some to furnish it all, and another two hundred some to uh, staff it for two years. And so we're going to be right around 1.5, 1.6 when it's finished. Is that is that going to increase your capacity a lot? Uh, no, just it just uh, for that building there'll be uh, six families. It won't increase our capacity in the mm -hmm. sense of uh, who we serve and stuff. Now they'll they'll come over for the meals, three three meals a day and stuff. But our meals have gone up. Um, for January of this past year, we were over uh, almost 85, 8,600 meals, which is almost uh, 1,600 more than we had serve on an average basis. In a month? You in served 8,500 meals? Yeah, in a month. Wow. Yeah, our meals have gone up. Uh, the peop um, There's all kinds of things happening where people, um, I think at the end of this month, are losing their... Um, so, snap benefits. Snap benefits, yeah. that's right. That's, yeah. that's phenomenal yeah. and really sad all at once. 
Yes. And it's up, it went up 1,600, and we haven't even hit the end of SNAP yet. Yeah, and, and we, we're seeing more uh, families, more seniors coming in than ever before. Uh, Matt will tell you he's there uh, quite a bit. Um, he, the, uh, e- even in the beginning of the month, when normally the, our numbers will go down, uh, they have not gone down, and which, which shocks us because normally we kind of get like a week or 10-day break before it starts ticking back up again uh, because they get their checks and stuff. And it's just um, with wintertime and everything else, it's just not – it's not it's happening. A, it's the cost of food here in Joe Biden's America. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, un, it's unbelievable how little you get um, for your money. My, my daughter called me after going to the grocery. She's like, Dad, I just spent $70 at Aldi, which is yeah. supposed to be inexpensive. Yeah. She's like, I got two and a half bags of stuff. Yeah. I said, well, you know, eat carefully. <laughs> yeah, it, and it and it has. It's really gone up, and uh, we, we've, we've got hit in our donations because of that. So... Um, but the Lord's provide and the Lord's taken care and uh, we're able to feed. It's just, it, it is sad uh, when you see, because we see more and more families on the weekends. School's off. We see a lot more families. So it, it's gone up a lot. Um, but you know what? It, it, the neat thing about this community, again, this community has always stepped up and it's just always provided and always is there for us. And um, the num- uh, it's um, the drug situation, too. We deal a lot with that. We see a lot more people coming in. Um, when they test, they test positive. I think we maybe have had one or two not test positive out of maybe a hundred in the last uh, month or so that when they come in off the streets. So we see that also. That's taking place more and more. I mean, if you if you think about the the size of Martinsburg, you're feeding, and I just did the math. You're feeding 287 people a day on average. Oh, more than that, yeah. Well, I mean, 8,600 yeah. divided by the the month, yeah. but yeah, I mean that's that's unbelievable. There's yeah. that many people. There are that many people that are food insecure that, that need that much help, man. It's yeah. so good that you're there doing. And that. our breakfast numbers have gone up. That's well, that's how you know when when the breakfast numbers go up because <laughs> you got to show up at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. you might not be able to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm missing. There's no, ah. there, there's, there's no might involved, Tim. <laughs> so you got you got to show up at seven. And it's only till seven thirty. I, I, so. I refer to that as intermittent fasting, Tim. I don't eat before noon. <laughs> yeah. So, but but it, it's it, it is it's it's uh, you know we, we we thank the Lord for providing all the time. But it is sad. I mean, um, mm. I see I see it a lot. I see the numbers. I see a lot of the things, and it it it, it wears on you every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, it, but you know, again, I, I thank God for this community. I thank God for the for the donors out there, folks like yourselves that helped me uh, get the word out, and make it aware. It it is it is tough, and that's like I said with families. We see a lot with the families. That's why this six hundred four project. Um, I know it's going to get there. I wish it was sooner <laughs> than later. Um, but uh, we're further along than we've ever been. Um, it's really neat to see the progress, to see the rooms. Now I can actually say that's a room. This is a <laughs> this is a bathroom. This is going to be the living room. Room, uh, stuff like that, where you can see it all framed in. It's coming there, and the brickwork is coming. The masons, the roof. Um, it's just a matter of time getting it all done. So six families will have a place to stay yeah. and be a family unit, not be separated mm-hmm. while they're getting back on their feet. Right, That's great. And that, and there's no place like that uh, for homeless families right now in in Berkeley, Jefferson, Morgan. Uh, I don't even think Washington County. Right no, you now. see them packed into uh, yeah. into motels like yeah. the motel up on uh, Edwin Miller Boulevard, yeah. the Suites place. Yeah, they pack a lot of families in there where everybody's in one room. I mean, that's yeah. they're getting to live. Their kids are getting an opportunity. They're getting to hopefully, yeah. you know, getting to move forward and and see maybe the errors, some of the mistakes that have been made through their lives and. Maybe these kids end up being the ones who are back there volunteering and, and yeah. donating money and helping. And they'll be plugged into all the different uh, agencies and programs and schools and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll have everybody plugged in. They'll they'll benefit just like anybody that's uh, uh, there, single and, and, and homeless. So all that stuff is there for them. And that's what's the exciting part about it is that we already have the stuff ready to go for them to get the help. And, you know, you mentioned families and stuff like that. It's... Um, so much is going on so much is going on with families and the breakdown of families and um you uh, for example when i started our discipleship track about two years ago i started with 19 men in in, in a, one of our in our first class out of 19 men uh only one of them had a father growing up in their home mm-hmm. and that one father that was there 
when they were growing up was abusive. So you had eight, eight, uh, 19 men, 18 of them had no father, and one had an abusive father. And, 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 and I'm, I'm just bringing this subject up because you mentioned that. The family unit intact, uh, and I know it, that's a whole other subject for another day, that, that is so vital. I mean, a lot of those guys that you interviewed over the summer, mm -hmm. uh, I could tell you um, only one had a father in the picture the entire time. And that, that, that father thing is so important that have that impact, have that together as a family unit. I see that a lot of the men that come in, we're getting kids that are coming in now from foster care as they empty out into foster care. They come into us. And again, it's that um, the family unit, the breakdown, and it's not there. And we, I, I see that so much. And, and no men uh, growing up in their lives, and it's vital. It's really I mean, vital. I, I don't see how, and I mean, sitting here with, with these two guys, my, who I consider my friends, I mean, fatherhood is the most, I mean, it, it's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing in the world. Oh, yeah. I cannot imagine why any man would have children and not want to be at their games, not want to coach them, not want to teach them, not want to teach them values, not want to be there for them, not want to feed them. I mean, we, when I had my office on Raleigh Street, we used to sit there and we'd see people walking down the street and we would think to ourselves, you know, we'd see who, the parents and we'd see maybe a mom, maybe, you know, maybe a grandma. And you should look at them and you're thinking, you know, these are kids who probably have never had a meal that was provide, provided for by the hard work of their father. Yep. And there's something wrong with that because there's something satisfying about working a hard day, mm -hmm. making your living and feeding your family. And why do people not have that? And that's why when we do connect the men back into society and stuff like that, that if they have back pay, child pay, uh, getting back with the family, if that's not involved, we work on that to where they get back with the family, they pay back the child, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Child support, support, child support. Uh, all that stuff. And and when you when the man starts doing that, you see the connection come back together, and that is such re uh, refreshing. It's so rewarding. We make we challenge them to pay fines. In fact, we're working with a, a a guy right now that has some fines to pay and some back child pay, and he's getting that all done. Plus, he's also restoring his relationship with his daughter. I mean, I I'm a father of four daughters, and I can't imagine. I mean, my daughters are very. Uh, uh, big part of my life in fact when i was in the ukraine my one daughter for what she does for a living uh gave me a lot of heads up of what was above me or what was coming in on me uh because of what she does for a living um and here's you know here i was uh protecting her all her life and then mm -hmm. i'm in the ukraine and she's protecting me <laughs> as i'm moving cool. through the war zone That's awesome. <laughs> she's saying dad they're, they're yeah. over this way dad they're it's coming in <laughs> i'm like okay 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 and she's texting me the entire time dad it's time for you to get out of there you're too old <laughs> 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 we passed the one year mark there yeah now. oh yeah and we had yep. marina yep. mcdonald on last uh week yeah. uh who's from the ukraine she was able to get her family out early on in that yeah in that war and she always uh she, she first and foremost she handles herself remarkably well mm -hmm. considering how personal this war is to her, oh, and, her yeah. and to her family and i know you've seen the atrocities up oh. close firsthand see too much and and that's and to me you know being without my daughters uh i mean it's just so uh it, it so i i just we see all that all the time and and we help restore the families we that's another step there, and, and I'm hope I, I really want to get this project done soon because I have another thing that I'd like to get to, <laughs> but I can't get to it until this project is done. <laughs> so and you how much more? Uh, half a million. About half a million. And, yes. and how do people contribute to it? They just go right online to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, hit the donation button, put 604 Project, or put 604 Project on their memo line on their check, or just hand me the cash and I'll take put it in the 604 Project. It, it, Come on out March 7th. March 7th. What's up March 7th? Uh, March 7th is a walkthrough. The uh, public is invited to come on out and come through the 604 Project to walk through to see our progress. It's going to be from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. that night, uh, that evening. So March 7th, which is next Tuesday, it's a walkthrough. Come on, 
and walk through and, and check it out. Now, if you can't, if you maybe you don't have a half a million dollars to donate or five dollars, whatever, $1. you can also help with your time and in, in, in working with people like Volunteer. Matt Miller does here. Matt, what's your interaction at the rescue mission? Uh, we have an opportunity, my wife and I, to come in and work with a, a gentleman who is uh, hard of hearing, and uh, my wife is a sign language interpreter, and so it's just been an awesome time with uh, with this particular uh, man to be able to help him grow in his, his reading skills. And, and math skills and and the other things we do we do a little bible study at the beginning of each of those times as well and it's just been a blast and then you know through that the opportunity to meet a lot of other guys as we're coming in and out and talk and share and then at times be able to pray with them and then uh, our church group uh, we've got a group of men from the church that i go to that we're there the final monday of, of every month and so uh, that's a neat time too we'll bring in uh, some snacks and and foods and things and after a chapel service just hang out with the guys and and uh, be able to uh, get to know more about them and share in their lives and and we've done the same thing you with guys, our you guys did the Super Bowl party yeah, for us yeah, yeah Fellowship of Christian Athletes for yeah. two years now we've done it where on Super Sunday we play a game of flag football uh, over at Martinsburg High School and then invite any of those that attend that to come to the rescue mission and uh, we've had a church uh, Heritage Free Will Baptist Church out of Inwood who has given us a tremendous amount of money to help cover food costs and John Tobin at Tobin's Country Catering has been excellent. He donated two big containers of mac and cheese, and I mean good mac and cheese. And, uh, <laughs> and you made and some chili. I made some chili. It, it was okay. I, I had way too much. It was one of my first experiments with a huge amount, and I, I, don't, I don't think I got the seasoning quite where I wanted it, but uh, but the guys ate it, so I was thankful. They, <laughs> yeah. they, next, told, me, they told me it was good. Yes. So. Next year, you'll have it perfect. <laughs> I, I hope so, you know. So, But, uh, but yeah, and then th- those kind of experiences, those opportunities uh, are neat and and even uh, it, it's fun because i think it came from the uh the fca event the super bowl sunday event is when my wife and i were there yesterday morning on the way out one of the gentlemen hollered from a distance and said pastor and of course i i just kind of turned quick who's he talking to and he went aren't you one of the pastors and i said oh well i was here with the fca group and he said yeah cool and we shook hands and talked for a second and told him i was going to be back uh, last night our church group was there last night so. and, and it means so much to the guys the guys appreciate that because it, it connects them to reality connects mm. them to the outside it's just really neat we do need volunteers in the kitchen front desk and the mm. thrift store and um, just to come on in and hang out with the guys and and help them along in their walk speaking of the kitchen new yeah. flooring down yeah, in there we got Tell the us. new flooring done uh, boy that was a project in itself <laughs> and we still got a lot more work to do now we got to do our showers and our bathrooms and okay. stuff like that and um, I just happened to show up when you know, when a building's 10 years old and things are starting to fall <laughs> apart, and it's my job now to get it all repaired. <laughs> We've covered this before, and I want to ask you a couple more times yeah. because, uh, especially over the last five years, it seems like every time you go to a corner stop at a red light, there's somebody there with a sign that says, disabled vet, uh, homeless, need help, need need money for this. I, I was uh, dropping my son off at a doctor's appointment the other day, and a woman came up to me and she said, I need 70, $17 for my radiation treatment. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. It, seemed like an odd amount for a radiation treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she went to somebody else's car, and they they looked like they were giving her some money, and then she went off and went nowhere near the medical building yeah. with the $17. Or, or they come with you with a gas can and say, I just need $5 to fill up this gas oh, can. Yeah. yeah, and it's always yeah. to go to Charlestown for yeah. some reason. Yeah, but, if, yeah. <laughs> but, if you, but if you offer to go to the gas station yeah, with get, them, oh, they, yeah, no, yeah, they yeah. don't want that. Yeah, they get irate. My question is to come back to you. I know yeah. there's, there's uh, obviously a lot of folks, when presented with that, feel guilty if they don't give yeah. money to a person who's panhandling your thoughts on I, I would say if, if you feel guilty not giving money to somebody that's panhandling then give that five dollars ten dollars whatever you're going to give to that person to a charity i mean there's the salvation army there's us there's uh ccap there's uh, uh loaves and fishes there's uh fellowship of christian athletes there's all those other charities you can give to that you know where your money's going and it's being used for what they say it's being used for i'm uh it's called toxic charity it's a way you make somebody feel guilty uh being a preacher uh, i was taught when i preach you never make somebody feel guilty you make you make them feel compelled and and see there's a difference in making somebody feel guilty and compelled mm-hmm. if i make you feel guilty it's it, it, it's uh, i'm standing there in the corner a lot of times they used to do it in california 
California, they would take a, a child, uh, usually underage, and sit there t- on the corner with them and say, we're homeless and hungry. And then to come to find out, sometimes it's not even their child that they're sitting there with. Um, so uh, a lot of times in, in this area, a lot of times this, and this stuff is going for drugs. And I know somebody will say to me, and again, if you're, if you're a born-again Christian and you believe in the Lord and you study the Bible and you say, well, well it's my money, I can do what I want with it, um, be careful. That's an arrogant. That is very arrogant when you say that as a Christian, as a Christian, because it's not your money. It's God's money. Mm-hmm. Everything I have, I'm a steward of. I own nothing. I'm a steward of it. And so when you say as a thank Christian. You, thank you for saying that. Buddy. Yeah. When you say as a Christian, I can do what I want. It's my money. That's very arrogant. That's very arrogant. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just remember that because you're saying what God, what God, what, what God has loaned you, you, you own it. You don't own nothing. I mean, Honestly, I don't own any. I have no control over anything. I mean, uh, what I think I have control over, <laughs> nine times out of ten, I don't. Now, if you're non, if you're non-Christian, you're a non-believer, and that's what you believe, then I, I can't say nothing to that. It, it, you do what you want with that. But I'm telling you right now, it's called toxic charity. Be careful. Be careful because in Martinsburg, ninety-nine point nine percent of the people that are standing on the corners, we know, we know personally. They come into the mission. We see them. They're on drugs. Uh, they laugh about it. They even brag about how much money they make uh, panhandling, and they even tell uh, each other where the where the best places are to get whatever money they need. Mm-hmm. We deal with it every day, every day at the mission. If you don't believe me, come volunteer. I'll introduce you to the people that are standing on the corners or standing on the ramps. I'll introduce you to them. <laughs> I say, here's this person that stands on this ramp, and he'll stand there and go, yeah, I stand there all the time. So, uh, in fact, we've had some now that are now recovering, and they're clean and sober. One actually has a job in a local business here in town that used to be on the ramp, was notorious of standing on the ramp and collecting money. Now he's working full-time, he's clean and sober. So I'm not saying this just because I'm saying it, uh, and I, I got no evidence to back it up. I got evidence to back it up. But I know a lot of people will say, well, well, Pastor Tim, I'm a Christian. It's my money. I do what I want with it. Oh, you better read those <laughs> scriptures again because you are a steward of what God has given you. And it's just like I tell my kids and I tell the guys at the rescue mission, we are blessed with what we have. We're stewards of it. That's why one of our values is stewardship because we don't get government funding. I don't get a check from the government. Uh, never, and since 1956, the mission doesn't get one dime from the government. So everything we get, we have to be good stewards with, whether it's recycling, thrift store, uh, the food, all that stuff gets used and given back to the people and stays right here at 608 West King Street. And that's the neat thing about giving. So if you feel guilty and you can't get, and you don't want to give to that guy in the corner, there's all kinds of other legitimate charities in town. I mean, I can't, um, Maria Larson, uh, the program she's with. Uh, help me out here. I'm trying. I don't know Maria Larson. I know Maria Lawrence. 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 Hospice. I'm sorry. Hospice. Hospice. Yeah. yeah see, okay. I, that's just my, you know. <laughs> no, you're right. That's my public I thought school. you were close. That's <laughs> my public school education. <laughs> 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 I, I grew up in a time where, like you said, the words and everything, they'd have yeah. labeled me something else, but uh, they, just yes. said, they just said you can't talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're just an observer. <laughs> yeah. Take the test. Be yeah. quiet. But there's hospice. Hospice of the Panhandle, great organization. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about uh, giving and and supporting something uh, horses with hearts or hearts with horses i get it wrong every horses time with hearts. <laughs> yeah i get it wrong every time but i mean there's so many wonderful charities I think that's k barkwell yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you if you feel guilty give it to somebody like that that's it's going to go to be productive and not to buy drugs you're giving it to somebody they're buying drugs that's a crime okay nine times out of ten they get a motel room they hire they hire prostitutes that's another crime okay come on guys i mean don't give me this what's well, my money okay if you're a christian and you're going to tell me that oh lord I, I i pray today that you meet the lord jesus and he says is your money <laughs> let, let, let's have a conversation that's why, that's why you can't take it with you right? that's right that's why you can't take it with you. I, I always when they ask me for money i always say well can i buy you some food exactly can i buy the gas yeah. if i'm putting gas in a gas can yeah. or i'm putting gas in a car i've done that many times yeah let me cut i, I had the guy the other day let me get he, you a sandwich he didn't even know who i was i said why don't you go to rescue mission oh they won't let me in there i said what do you mean he says well the guy that runs the place don't like me i said really i said i think i know that guy <laughs> <laughs> See, people contribute to the 604 604- 
fun, sir. Oh, yes. Come online, MartinsburgUnionRescueMission.com. Hit the donate button. Mark the 604 Project. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you so much for your donations and your support of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Thanks for coming in today. Always great to have you here. Thank you so much. Good Thanks. to see you, Tim.